So uh, before we start talking about um, the value of our portal for Deutsche Börse Group, I wanted to tell you more about Deutsche Börse Group. Um, it's um, organizational landscape and um, value chain so that you have an, a better idea of how our portal is supporting this. Um, so Deutsche Börse Group is an international exchange organization and a market infrastructure provider, um, ensuring safe and efficient capital markets. So um, our business areas and subsidiaries are covering the entire financial market uh, transaction chain starting from uh, investment management, uh, listing um, assets and instruments, um, then allowing trading and clearing of instruments, and uh, then also taking care of the post-trade services uh, and settlement custody and so on. Um, so yeah, with, uh, with our um, subsidiaries, uh, Contigo, um, we uh, basically allow um, the provisioning of indices, um, analytical, uh, analytical solutions. And with uh, SimCorp, the newly acquired SimCorp and ISS, um, we also provide uh, different investment fund strategies. Um, then we come back to, uh, to the trading and clearing part, uh, where we have um, the on-exchange uh, markets uh, market trading for uh, securities uh, with with uh, Xetra and uh, with Urex we offer the trading uh, of derivatives which are like a contract derived from other assets or reference values of uh, yeah for example also equities or uh, indices German bonds um, and German government bonds <laughs> Well, we call it the Bund future, and uh, also commodities, uh, agricultural products, um, and energy. Um, and EX is our commodities exchange. Um, also having a foreign exchange, uh, 360T. And uh, then uh, we also um, provide the clearing and um, uh, settling of, of portfolios and risks. Um, our post-trade services include um, the settlement and custody of inst financial instruments, uh, mostly done by Clearstream. And uh, then we have additional investment funds um, services provided by, by CNIP. Um, in the last few years, um, our business has been strongly focused on delivering additional markets that uh, have no more digital assets. So, um, and we have acquired crypto finance, where we're starting an initiative of providing the, um, uh, different assets or different instruments. Um, not only cryptocurrencies, but also um, other electronic assets to be also um, traded and uh, cleared um, in Deutsche Börse Group um, and then the respective settlement and custody. Uh, so this is a really a, a strong business vision uh, on our side. Um, we have another similar initiatives uh, which uh, copes with uh, the issuance of digital securities, it's called the seven, um, and it's um, also being yeah in development since let's say um, I think one year already. Um, we had uh, recently the the first thousand digital securities that have been issued issued in that system. So, um, yeah, and below that we have uh, uh, our enterprise architecture and uh, the enterprise services that we, we offer for the entire group. And it's quite complex, um, as you can imagine, quite a lot of, <laughs> quite a lot of different um, companies, uh, quite a lot of different processes that have to be aligned, um, for which we need to provide a common infrastructure. Um, capabilities, uh, common data management and analytics capabilities, and the common technology capabilities 
in order to be able to work together and cooperate um, to provide uh, the value chain. That being said, um, and how our portal plays a role in this, uh, you would find out in a bit. And I would give now the word to Jana, who would tell you a bit about the API platform story, how it started, um, and where is it today? Yes, thank you very much, Mira. Um, so uh, I'll tell you, as said, a story of how we went from a small upskilling project to a group-wide collaboration. So um, first we will look, uh, take a look back uh, on how it started. Then we'll like, take a look on how uh, the portal has been developed. And um, we'll also explain uh, what we are focusing on today and how we are trying to address the business needs. And then uh, we'll end up with a little insight on what's coming soon. So when we are looking back, um, our API platform was born around six years ago and has been started as an initiative, a purely IT initiative to actually upskill the, the developers and to, um, to create a very first cloud native application that is in production. As you can imagine, six years ago, there was not many, um, there were not many productive applications in the cloud in a corporate and financial world. And uh, this was kind of a little startup project. Um, so this has been uh, taken as a little challenge and it has been very quickly developed. Uh, and um, as the, the developers have been enabled to use a different new stack of technology, uh, etc. So they didn't need to completely stick to what we have been having in the group. And, um, and this is how it started. And then we had a lot of discussions uh, with the businesses, with the IT departments, and we realized that at the beginning, the business was not completely ready to create business use cases around APIs and um, but we had a lot of we, we had a lot of uh, stakeholders from the IT side that were interested that also had customers and that have uh, finally published first APIs so these APIs were free and uh, publicly accessible to anyone who wanted to sign up with our with our platform um, and then we continued to develop. So we've, um, as at the beginning, we didn't have many business cases. We uh, were developing mostly for the developer needs, creating a kind of a developer ecosystem where we were focusing on two, two types of users, so publishers and the consumers of the APIs. Um, with, uh, um, so with a, Mm, with the publishers, for example, they what they can do nowadays, they can uh, publish APIs, they can document them uh, in a standard way, they can uh, use our API gateways, they can configure the, the APIs in a very secure way, and they can also uh, get the, uh, they, they can get the consumption statistics, so they can understand the, the consumption behavior of their, uh, their consumers. They can also set up how, uh, how much the APIs can be visible to the outside world because we have a lot of public APIs they, that are only offered for the customers and not for the, from the entire public world. Uh, we also developed a team collaboration by introducing organizations. Also, we've been focusing on the consumers. So the consumers who can access the API catalog, they, uh, they can search, filter uh, uh, according to, to what, they, uh, what they are looking for. Then they can sign up for free, they can uh, subscribe to any API that is uh, available and directly generate the API keys on the applications um, in the developer portal or, or uh, use the token features. And so this is how 
the project has been developing over the years and what we are focusing now today um, so we are trying to address the business needs and we are trying to align between IT and and the business a bit more so we uh, we've been focusing still like we're still keeping the features that we have developed but we are trying to improve the API catalog we are trying to to improve the searchability and the way the user subscribed and we're trying to we are planning and already prototyping the dashboards, analytical dashboards for both publishers and consumers. And of course, as the business needs to now also, they're coming with the use cases where they would like to uh, publish APIs that are uh, payable. We we are coming, uh, we are having discussions about the monetization of the APIs. And how we are trying to as align with the business uh so we we've been proven that it's uh the, the easiest way how the it and business can discuss was uh through some mockups so if they have something visual uh in front of them they can understand each other much better so that's how we are using the product design uh in our project to uh, to help us actually to to achieve what we want and to to align between these two uh, two big worlds that are quite different sometimes. And now I'll hand back over to Mira to explain how the enterprise services come into the play today. Yeah, thank you, Yana. Um, so yeah. Um, as Jana mentioned, it hasn't been easy in the beginning, uh, but now uh, the business uh, recognizes the value of uh, offering uh, APIs, not only uh, to our customers, uh, which has proven quite useful um, as we have, uh, we, we have many new uh, customers we, which we would have never thought of uh, in the beginning. We would never thought that they would be interested in the financial industry so usually our customers are banks um, and when we exposed certain services to an api we've seen a, a lot of maybe customers of the bank connected with us so we saw that a lot of uh, other uh, businesses uh, including insurances uh, connected um, and um, with us and wanted to to yeah, work with us, receive the data. Um, we saw that there is much more interest in, that, interest in, in this kind of data than we have originally uh, thought of and originally the business thought of. So this was quite an interesting experience um, for the business to see um, where value can be also generated. But also uh, the portal currently generates value in consolidating um, all the services that are currently offered um, through all the different companies uh, that are part of this value chain. So we try to consolidate everything that is offered from the different companies, from, from, from the listing part of things, from the fund management part of things, to the trading, clearing and the post trade. Um, including the settlement in one single portal um, so that the customers don't need to go to a different different yeah platforms to <laughs> to to uh, see what kind of data they can get from there um, uh, but also um, this is like one of one of the main things that we wanted to make sure that we can um, facilitate our customers to do um they basically uh, need one login uh, in order to just um, see what is available and access um, some of these services even for free uh, but also uh, communicating between the systems um, and exchanging data between the systems is uh, sometimes done via api and this also needs some kind of control um so how is the data exchanged um, is it via APIs? Is it a, another service? And uh, that's where our platform also helps the business um, and uh, automates or allows the automation of a lot of the existing processes that we have in the company. 
Um, yeah, recently um, also the business saw the potential of uh, maybe offering more than the current services that, that we have on the platform. So they are thinking of even enhancing this and um, uh, offering um, some some products or some APIs um, that can be monetized. And um, yeah, so we currently, um, we will be building, sorry, on top of the uh, developer portal, we would be uh, building a new marketplace um, where uh, APIs, billable a APIs can be exposed. Yeah, and this is this is the future. So um, we are still we are still focusing on our de uh, developer portal. We are still developing the features in there. Um, things that are accessible for free would still continue to be accessible there. Um, but eventually, something new would come on top. Um, yeah, uh, to it. So thanks to the original idea of exposing services to APIs a portal which started just as a upscaling project as Jana mentioned. Thank you for the presentation. Let me start with the same question. Um, support, uh, because um, the amazing amount of services that the APIs connect or uh, expose, um, that's kind of mind blowing. And I I can't imagine that uh, everybody understands the ins and the outs, both the technical and the conceptual side. How do you solve the the support of the people who want to integrate but are not necessarily sure? In either tech, maybe not technically, but mostly mostly not conceptually. I see that the the portal has a um, uh, a guide, and you have a, a short explanation of the APIs. But uh, what was the team? set up like and how do you how do you support people in not making mistakes yeah so we we have a support mailbox where we usually also get a lot of questions which we then um definitely uh try so we we offer first hand support and uh, we offer technical support uh but we also use this mailbox to further um requests coming um so to further the request to the business because a lot of people are contacting us just to understand okay i i see that you're offering this and this i would be interested in consuming um that in addition mm -hmm. are you offering it somehow or would you offer it and um that's what we then um for the give to the business uh, where they gather ideas for new uh, services and APIs that they can that they can offer. But mm -hmm. the technical support is really done uh, on our side and depends on the um, API publisher. So if it's like an API like specific question, then we forward, uh, forward this to the respective publishers. We have also the contacts in there and they offer support um, to, to the customers for that. But yeah, so we, we, we manage support, I think so far, um, so far it's, um, it's working good for us. Um, yeah, we have to see in the future, maybe, uh, focusing also more on that side and expanding the team, um, the support team to handle more requests at the same time. Mm -hmm. What metrics are you looking at on the portal? maybe both from the user experience side and also from the business side usage so we usually use uh we look at, at the daily usage of the apis we also look at um how many requests were successful so if we notice that um a lot of requests have been done but they were all unsuccessful then we uh contact in some cases we contact uh, the users and ask them if they if they need help or uh, what is going on um, why are they not succeeding with their requests but usually we we look at, at the usage and uh, the usage is also what the business um, looks at as a metric to to decide uh, where to go on with this api if if they want to expand the service offer more monetize something or um or not in that case. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you mentioned that you're looking into adding monetization to some of the APIs. 
Um, if you are allowed to talk about it, mm -hmm. um, will you be adding additional metrics because of some things being monetized? Yes, yes, of course, with monetization, um, the complexity will grow and then we would um, have additional metrics to look at depending on the monetization models. Um, this is something that the business is looking at, but um, you know, so there are different models for pay as we go or you, you can have a tiered approach. Uh, based on that, we would be providing them um, with the respective metrics to decide on which model works best for the customers in that case. And um, yeah, so that they can adapt the models. Mm -hmm. You were saying that the uh, API portal um, mm -hmm. started as sort of an experimental project years ago. Now, um, it's hard to put your finger on it, but if you can, do you still consider it an experimental project? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And when when did that phase shift happen? And how does that feel? How, how what what do you remember? How does that feel when you know that this is not an experimental project anymore? And why was there a clear phase change at some point? Not so clear, to be honest. So it started really, really uh, small, like, right, let's see what we can put on the cloud because, yeah, with our financial data, we are not sure. We, we are regulated. We don't know what we, we want to um, take on this journey with the digitalization journey. And we try to do something on the cloud, but um, regulatory requirements are pretty important. Uh, for us. So no one ever trusted themselves to do something on the cloud. So we started really with, with this portal and with some small services that we wanted to offer. But since um, like the digitalization journey is being pushed forward and now we are also partnering um, with a cloud provider, in this case, Google, um, to support us on our further journey. Um, the regulators are also looking at, at the cloud um, now more positive. Um, this things started slowly to change. The team started growing. Um, customers uh, started expecting um, real production support from us. Um, business saw that there is value in this. And uh, yeah, things started to change. But it was like a there was not a, like a harsh change. Uh -huh. It was just yeah. a slow. It's, it's happening very slowly. Yeah. <laughs> it's it changing slow. very slowly. So you experienced the team growing. Um, and I guess the because of that, you experienced bigger numbers given as budget. Uh, then you experienced more requests for production, uh, production help. Um, and, and Jana, as a UX designer, do you... Can you put your finger on like, okay, that was a face change. I think the, the phase when we changed something was when we maybe a year or two years ago started to focus more on the consumers and more on the public side and the business side of the aspects of the, of the platform where we, because before we were mostly really focusing on the developers, developers, developers. And we realized that, okay, our users are also business users. It's also our managers, business managers who are looking at this portal. And if they don't feel comfortable with it, uh, they will not give us the budget so that we can develop further and they will not want to work with us. So we realized that um, we are not really working just and building the, the, the product just for the developers. Mm -hmm. It has to be also for the business. So so this was a little bit of change uh, for me uh, in terms and, of the UX design. And maybe to add here, that's why we don't call it a developer portal. Um, so we call it an API a portal. Mm -hmm. We don't want to address the developers only. Although it was built for developers, uh, that's why the portal is really accessible as an API. So you don't need to even access the uh, user interface. You can do everything uh, using just the API. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, being under a lot of regulations, I guess maybe accessibility also comes up. How do you tackle accessibility currently? Yeah, and then we want to. Talk about it. <laughs> That's probably cup of tea. So this is one of the topics I think that we will have to focus on right now. Like it's not something that we, we have been putting 
enough in our focus, I think. Uh, but recently I started to look at these topics because I know that it's very important and also it will, it will become a regulatory required in, uh, in two years, I think. So, in one year. Bye. Right, yeah. Ari, we're 23. 20, okay, three yeah, years. 25. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's so 14 months, to, but yeah. Yeah. So it has to definitely become more of a topic. So we were, we have been using the, the technology stack that enables this accessibility, um, uh, like components that, that can do that. However, it was not really the, the biggest focus so far. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. It's, you're right, this is one of the topics that we have to tackle very, very soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Allow me one last question quickly, uh, connected to business model. And I'm still fishing around this, going from experimental to, okay, we're doing this. Um, when was the point when uh, business demanded any kind of metrics to be reported on? Um, I think it was two years ago. Two years ago, um, when we started connecting also other entities like Peerstream on our portal, uh, then the business started looking at this demanding metrics, um, like we having also like uh, contracts with the respective entity. So we would anyway need to provide um, metrics. But yeah, that's maybe the, the time where they started looking at the metrics, but also when they realized that some of the APIs are really consumed by many unexpected clients, they started wanting more and more metrics. Mm -hmm. so, but I think I would say this was two years ago. Mm -hmm. So this is also a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jana Mira, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you for having us. Thank you so uh, much. <laughs>